hey loves welcome or welcome back to my channel if you are new here my name is faith and today guys i'll be checking out thomas Sowell as he speaks on the rise of anti-semitism around the world and you guys i'm super excited for this and if you are here to subscribe to this channel please consider subscribing give this video a massive thumbs up comment share and all that good stuff and without much ado let's see what this video is all about and most people when they have a choice between hating others and hating themselves they hate others you have uh, a chapter that's the first chapter is uh, black rednecks and white liberals the second chapter is are jews generic mm -hmm. why the jump to from black rednecks and white liberals to are jews generic what's the point well, this book is really about ethnic and cultural issues in general. So there's a chapter on the Jews, there's a chapter on the Germans, and then there's a chapter on history in general. So that, that's, uh, they're, they're lumped together because they're all cultural ethnic issues. Uh, and uh, we move on to the Jews simply because it's, it's a fascinating story because among the, 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 the middle man minorities, of which the Jews are the most prominent, uh, the hostility to these people in countries around the world is out of all proportion to that, to any other kind of group I can think of. Uh, in terms of the violence, uh, the, vi the number of, uh, of uh, black, the number of Chinese killed, let's say, in one year, uh, and by mob action, exceeds all the blacks lynched in the entire history of the United States. Mm. And the number of Armenians killed in uh, in Turkey, you know, during the First World War, is greater than that. And of course, the number of Jews slaughtered on a number of occasions in history, even before the Holocaust, is greater than that. Why? So that the question is, why this particular kind of people? are the targets of so much uh, uh, us venomous hatred. And I think the answer is that um, they, not, they not only succeed, they succeed in a way which is the threat to the egos of other people. Oh, so that it is, stands no, for no, jealousy. No, you can envy a Rockefeller, wow. but he's no threat to your ego because you say, listen, anybody can be rich if he's born a Rockefeller. Yeah. But the guy who c comes here, let's say from Vietnam or Korea and arrives here with little more than the clothes in his back and a few wor broken words of broken English, uh, and a decade later, he has his own little business, and you see his son a few years after that getting ready to go off to Harvard or MIT. Wow. You've got to ask yourself, you've either got to, you know, you, you, you've got to hate yourself for saying, my God, I've, I've been stagnating, this guy was nothing, and now he's risen up. Or you're going to have to hate because him. because he worked hard. And most people, when they have a choice between hating others and hating themselves, they hate others. Yeah. Where does the hatred for the Jews come from in history? You guys, I agree with what Thomas Sowell said because it's very easy for people to hate successful people. But one thing they fail to ask themselves is what makes these people successful even when years back they had absolutely nothing but just give them a few years. They have a very successful business and people begin to hate them for nothing. What are your thoughts on this one? And let's continue. number of places, but... Um they are people who, 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 have been, who have succeeded an awful lot in the midst of other people who have not. Uh, years ago, one uh, official of one of the Jewish organizations in New York asked me, well, what can Jews themselves do uh, in order to minimize the hostility they face? And I gave him a one-word answer, fail. Hmm. Because as long as you succeed, yeah. you're going to be hated. People are so the get source is su uh, success. It's not only the success, it's the success starting in poverty, as the Jews did in the United States and in, other, in many other countries. Uh, and so they, they, you, you not only see them succeed, you see them rise up mm. uh, from, from the bottom, past other people, and the people they've passed don't like it. But there's also the fact that the role they play economically is, has never been understood. Uh, it's, it, you know, they're middlemen or they're money lenders, and the argument is they really aren't producing anything. You can't see anything tangible that they, they don't stand at a production line turning out widgets. Uh, and so the argument is that they are, they're not producing anything, they're simply gratuitously inserting themselves between the producer and the consumer, and they're parasites, essentially. <laughs> and this argument has been made, again, not only by the Jews, but about similar groups around the world. Yeah. And in a number of places, they have uh, expelled those people or forced them out by mob actions, forced them to flee. And after they left, the economy has collapsed. Hmm. But it never teaches the lesson to know they were doing something. According to a history of the Jews in the United States, staggering numbers of Jews in the decades before and after the Civil War first experienced America through peddling, which became the nearly universal American Jewish male experience. While Jewish peddlers worked as isolated individuals, their supplies came from a wider network. Wow. 
Each peddler functioned in a long Jewish economic chain, linking shopkeepers to Jewish wholesalers in the larger cities on whom they depended for credit. The Jewish peddler on the road served as the agent of the Jewish town shopkeeper and the big city jobber. This trading network depended on intracommunal trust. Wholesaler and peddler understood each other, spoke the same language, and knew the same people. Jewish wholesalers in port cities from New York to San Francisco supplied Jewish peddlers with merchandise which they carried on their backs into the hinterlands to farmers, miners, railroad crews, and others working far from the big cities and often in places where there were few or no stores. Wow, you guys, this is very interesting. I never knew that the Jewish people are good businessmen and I didn't know until now they, that they are very, very successful in their businesses. Let me know what your thoughts are on this one. And let's wrap this video up, guys. Peddlers, of course, also worked in cities and in every region of the country. From the southern plantations to the California mining camps where Levi Strauss first began to sell the rugged trousers that were to make his name famous. While Jewish peddlers often worked in isolation among a non-Jewish population, they were nevertheless tied to a wider Jewish community, not only by commercial ties to Jewish wholesalers and manufacturers, but also to family members in Europe and America. They often saved money to pay for transatlantic passage for relatives in Europe to come and join them. These savings at some point also allowed the peddler to set up a little shop in town, settle down, get married, and raise a family. The wives and children then worked in the same little business. Often the Jewish shopkeeper or other small businessman and his family lived above or behind the store. Milton Friedman's family lived this way when he was growing up, a pattern that he described as common among the immigrants to America in that era. Yet this pattern was by no means confined to Jews or to America. Similar economic and social patterns could be found among the Lebanese in Sierra Leone and among other middleman minorities exactly. in other parts of the world. The overseas Chinese storekeeper in the Philippines was likewise willing to live in a small corner of his store. As among the Jews, Lebanese children were initiated into their family businesses in the United States, as were the children of other middleman minorities in other countries. Wow, you guys, that was such an interesting one from Thomas Sowell. I always learn a thing or two every single time I listen to Thomas Sowell. Let me know your thoughts on this one. Do you think that this is a root cause why the Jewish people are so hated? Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment in the comment section down below and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.